Hello everybody and welcome from sunny Santa Fe. Um, today I'm going to talk about love cards and about Robert Camp's uh, work here and you know they're also called Cards of Destiny and um, oh shout out to Jen Cole, Joyful Projector, thank you so much for the hat. So love cards are about incarnation and so it's interesting if you start to look at the people of of your life, different people in your life, uh, you will find some really interesting patterns. So, for instance, I was looking through and I, I um, discovered that my design date, you know, I'm a queen of hearts, my design date is the four of clubs. Well, I've known so many people and worked with so many people and had, like, I, let me see here. Fourteen people in my life that have been, you know, notable. Just that I found so far have been four clubs. And that's my design date, you know. And the thing is, when you read what Robert Camp says, he's, you know, a reflector, he's not into human design, and he's not going to... Thanks, for thanks Marcus, for pointing that out. Um, he's just going to tell you kind of the homogenized thing about the planets. He's going to tell you, well... You know, for instance, that Four of Clubs for me is the worst card in the deck for the Queen of Hearts. Uh, and I mean worst numerically, because there's a numerical value. The Four of Clubs, let's see. Uh, they're minus five compatibility. Nothing else has minus five. Nothing else comes close to minus five compatibility, according to him. So, but again, this is... Uh, oops, let me get the focus to fix on it. Uh-oh. There we go. Okay, apologies. Apologies for that. Had to get the, the focus there. And so you can see that there's all these different compatibilities. That minus five right there, that is for the four of clubs. And you can see that's all the different... Uh, yeah. So in any case, I mean, of course, you know, take it with a grain of salt. Um, I'm sure, you know, compatibility, intensity, attraction... Um, these are these are just what Robert Camp kind of sees and it is kind of enforced through a normative you know I can see why he came up with that he came up with it because it's Saturn Pluto Uranus Uranus Jupiter so Saturn Pluto Uranus Uranus Jupiter those are the connections in that order of strongest and then on down and I'm sure there's far more connections there's connections that are 10 places down and 15 places down and you know the whole deck really I mean we're all connected the whole deck is connected but he shows the connections to five places so let me see if I can get it to there we go so where it says yeah con one con two con three con four con five those are the connections right and it keeps going con six seven eight nine and, and so on but um, and this is just based on where you are you know the, the cool thing about this and I, I do hope to have memorized this at some point if you memorize the life spread, if you memorize the life spread here, you can actually just know based on where you are in the spread. Like I'm, I'm the queen of hearts down here, and then I can know relative to me all of these other positions, right? Ten of clubs, uh, or wait, wh where's the? Yeah, there's like there's all these. Let's see. Yeah, the, so ten of clubs is my Mercury, and you can see because from where I am. Uh, oops, I was over here, Queen of Hearts, then it goes up to the Ten of Clubs is the next, and my next one over, my Venus will be an Eight of Diamonds, because I'm born in Libra, that's also my planetary ruler, right, because Libra is ruled by Venus, and then my Mars is going to be King of Spades, so people out of that King of Spades energy are going to be my Mars, and then we keep going, um, Suppose it continues to the Three of Hearts, the next line down. That's my Jupiter. Then the Ace of Clubs is my Saturn. And it's, it's because we just keep going to the next line, to the next line, to the next line. So, um, yeah. So for me, because I'm... Oops, I'm over here. I'm in the bottom left of the whole thing. So because of that, it jumps up to the top right. And then I have Ten of Clubs, Eight of Diamonds... King of Spades, then I go Three of Hearts, Ace of Clubs, that's my Saturn, Queen of Clubs is going to be my Uranus, Ten of Spades is going to be a Neptune to me, and Five of Clubs is going to be a Pluto to me.
So the way that works then is because we get the planetary archetypes, um, you know, because we get those planetary archetypes, sorry, I'm having a hard time focusing. Let me get it to let me adjust. There we go. Okay, so those planetary archetypes we have a different relationship to in human design than Robert Camp has in his Love Cards book. We just do. You know, I don't have the same relationship to Saturn that he does. I don't. I feel like I have a personal relationship to some of these planets, actually, in a way that I feel a connection to them uh, that I didn't have before when I was just from the astrological way. Not to say I had no connection to them, but for instance, Neptune has been transiting gate 22. I feel like Neptune's the surgeon doing um, operations on my breathing, on everyone's breathing, right? We're all experiencing that Neptune transit. Um, and maybe this is just because, you know, in this system, Queen of Hearts is the Neptune, Neptune. And this is what I'd really love to uh, memorize, you know, <laughs> that I see the positive side of it, right? But, um, no, I mean, I think what's funny is, according to human design anyway, according to Ra, Neptune is part of the horizontal and the, the vertical, which goes against the diagonal in terms of being non-mutative versus mutative. What I mean by that is that if you look at the magic square in human design, which is this grid that's kind of laid out, then um, what you'll find is there's the, the vertical, which is made up, so Mars is in the middle, so we're not counting Mars here, but, and, and, and Moon's in the corner, it's kind of always relevant. So besides Mars and Moon, which are kind of special cases, what you get in the vertical, you get, um, let's see, you get the Mercury, Venus, Neptune, oh, and, and of course Jupiter, and you get Jupiter. So Mercury, Venus, Jupiter, Neptune, these are the, the two benefics, the, you know, kind of messenger of the gods communication, and Neptune, which is, you know, fantasy and Maya and um, escapism, maybe on, on the kind of negative side, or addiction, but, but also on the positive side, uh, dream dreams and, you know, rich, you know, you know kind of imagination, all this stuff. Um, what's interesting then, so then you go to the diagonal, and I actually do include Mars in with this because it's the mute, the planet of mutation that becomes kind of... When you're mutating, you start to get hot. You start to get sweaty. You start to get... When things are changing, you know. And, um, you know, Ra even conjectured that our body temperature would raise before and after human design. That is, before and after the deconditioning, we'd have a higher body temperature after. So Mars plays a role there. And then we have... Um, we have Saturn, Uranus, and Pluto. So Mars, Saturn, Uranus, and Pluto. So we also have the two malefics, the lesser and greater malefic. Then we have, um, we move on to the outer planets, Saturn, Pluto. So it's basically, um, sorry, the, yeah, Saturn's the malefic, Uranus and Pluto. And we can see that, um, Really, these are the four that become more important to you, more relevant to you in human design. So it would be interesting almost to look at what each person is to you. There's a few interesting things you can do with this. One is, if you look at all the people in your life who are of a certain card, look at the date you met them, and look, and look at the progress, and look at the more recent ones you've met. Has there been a progression? Right? Have you made, have you, do you have better relationships with them? Do you have better friendships than the, the ones in the past? that might show how your changing relationship to that planet is. As I mentioned, that four of clubs is a lot of Saturn-Pluto. Well, as I've undergone human design and mutated, my relationship to Saturn-Pluto may, may have drastically changed. Now, it also is going to be dependent on so many other things. I don't mean to just say that it's up to you and your um, relationship to a planet, because, you know, obviously that other person can handle that role well or not. Uh, so don't blame yourself for other people's bad behavior. But, you know, if somebody else is Saturn to you, and then you've had other Saturn to you cards in the past, the same card, like for me, four of clubs, four of clubs, four of clubs, four of clubs. My dad's a four of clubs, you know. I, I've been all around four of clubs my whole life. Um, and it's my design date, which is so funny. Um, but, you know, it's not necessarily bad, right? Saturn, I mean, like, of course, none of these are bad. And I don't think Robert Camp or anybody practicing this system would say they're bad. 
It's just that, you know, as I've said before, this does not wake you up. This is not human design. It's not the science of awakening. This is the science of incarnation. And it's funny, it's called love cards. But maybe it does show us that incarnation, we have cohorts that we're a part of. We have connections we're a part of, and so on. So, okay, well, just a little short, short one here, just kind of talking a little bit about planets. Um, you know, one thing I'd like to learn for myself is I would just like to, if I were able to, and I might, I might someday get it. I never thought I would memorize the body graph, and somehow I just learned it. I would like to really learn the, uh, the life spread. And the reason is because you see how it's Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, and so on. And then it's the same thing at the bottom. Well, what that's telling us is that each card, you know, if you're a four of clubs, for instance, um, let's find it here. If you're a four of clubs, that four of clubs is the Mars of Jupiter. Well, to me, to the queen of hearts, the Mars of Jupiter is like Saturn and Pluto and stuff, right? So it's funny that, you know, each one has a relative position and a sort of absolute position within it. So, for instance, uh, my moon, is my moon the six of spades? Yeah, so my moon is the six of spades. That is actually the Uranus of Neptune. So those six of spades people who are the Uranus of Neptune are going to bring me the deepest comfort and be the, the most moon to me. Those uh, ten of clubs people are going to be my Mercury, right? And they're just on the crown line. They're kind of out of it. My Venus people, um, the eight of diamonds. My Mars people, the king of spades. And then my... Uh, Jupiter people are going to be the Mercury of Mercury. The Three of Hearts are the most Mercury people there are. And to me, they're going to be Jupiter. And then the Venus of Mercury is my Saturn. The Mars of Mercury is my, um, you know, uh, Uranus. The Jupiter of Mercury, <laughs> and so on. So the, the most jovial, mercurial people, the Tens of Spades, they're going to be... Uh, was it my, my Pluto, right? No, my Neptune. Right. And the most Saturnine of the Mercurial people, the Nines of Clubs. I know a lot of Nines of Clubs. They are... Um, oh, sorry. Nope, that's the next one down. Five of Clubs, excuse me. They're my Pluto. Yeah, Nine of Clubs is the next one down. So, um, yeah, it's all really interesting. You can kind of just see from where you are and then how it goes in the spread. So this is what I'm really learning. I'm trying to learn life spread. I'm trying to learn them as the planetary archetypes and then use my human design relationship, my personal relationship to the planets, not the sort of homogenized standard relationship to the planets in my interpretation.